Hello, my name is Bill Such, and I'm taking this course that we'll be studying for the next um, few months. Um, I'm giving you a basic introduction here in a video setting um, that will set us up for the week in respect to the requirements in the syllabus and what you need to do in your reading for the next few weeks before we meet in October uh, for the intensive week. Um, first, a bit of background about myself. Um, I'm English, uh, educated in uh, England and New Zealand, I've lived, and uh, Africa. I studied at Fuller Seminary, where uh, I did two degrees, and then a, a degree, a PhD at the University of St Andrews in Scotland, and then I taught theology in Africa before coming back here. And I currently work at the Jesus Center in Chico, which is a place that um, we help uh, homeless people, we feed them, uh, up to 200 meals uh, twice a day. Um, we house women and children in a special facility for women who are living on the street. We provide free clothing. We have a contract with Butte County Behavioral Health to help people who suffer from uh, mental illness. And we liaise with the community in basically trying to provide services for people who are um, unemployed or suffering from substance abuse um, <coughs> in a way that we can bring Jesus Christ to these people. So I'll have much more to say about that. And in fact, on Wednesday, uh, we'll be coming down to Chico, where I have a whole plethora of activities that will uh, help us to uh, facilitate um, and get to know our subject, biblical interpretation. This really excites me because that's my uh, speciality. I love exegesis uh, because exegesis to me is the, the beginning of everything when it comes to biblical interpretation. There you are and you have your text before you, and as you get into the text then, from the text, the what I'd call the grassroots of elements come then ideas that become concepts that are then integrated in the rest of the Bible and that become a biblical theology or in a wider context systematic theology which are put together then to formulate uh, dogmas or doctrines that uh, take on forms of a creedal formula for example so that uh, whole um, denominations then will put forward a creed which basically says this is what we think are the most essential elements in terms of biblical theology or what we are to believe. Where does all this begin from? For me, it begins from actually approaching the text and looking at it. From that standpoint, uh, I'm a real Protestant. Uh, I remember many years ago when I was studying at Fuller Seminary, uh, I was going into a seminar, PhD seminar, with a, a man who was uh, in the systematic theology section. What we basically did was we uh, wrote papers for 50 page papers for a term. And then the following term, we presented uh, each other's papers with uh, the professors. And this uh, one guy um, looked at me and said, go easy on me. And I said, why, why is that? And he said, well, my uh, expertise is systematic theology and not exegesis. He knew I was involved in exegesis. And when he said that to me, I sort of had this image in my mind of a house that was constructed. And as I looked down, I saw that there were no foundations because the the whole uh, element of where systematic theology comes from, where our doctrines come from, uh, stems ultimately from exegesis. And that's what we're talking about. Uh, two elements of it, what you might call to be the interpretation of a text, of looking at a text to see what it says, and at the same time, the uh, element of then um, seeing what it means for us in the setting of where we're in. Uh, I like the way that uh, Fee actually develops that in his book on how to read the Bible, where he talks. Uh, I've had to adjust my camera there because uh, I got so excited and banging the table that the camera started to move around. So I was talking about Gordon Fee uh, with his notion of the difference between what you might call interpretation or reading. We'll talk about that, whether, whether it's, uh, it's too facile a, a notion to use in which he is dealing with biblical interpretation, but he talks about how to read the Bible for all it's worth. But he draws a distinction between interpreting the Bible in a sense, in its own context of where it is, uh, in terms of the ancient world, and then the hermeneutical element of interpreting it in respect of us. It's a, what we'd call a, a, a circle of intent. Um, one of the keys that um, is very, very important is to recognize that a, a text is a frozen element. By frozen element, I mean that it's divorced from its author. If you uh, write an article or a book or a memo and you send it out there, once you sent it out, it's gone. It's not yours anymore. And therefore, it's going to be interpreted in what way? It's going to be interpreted 
by itself in the sense of that it's self-contained. In that sense, I mean it's frozen in time. You can't be there and say, well, this is what I really meant by that. Uh, you've got to actually write it in such a way that the person who is reading it is able to read it within itself. And so, therefore, we're looking at that in a way as a human document when we look at the Bible. And then as we recognize the Bible is many human documents and is very complex from that standpoint, then what we have to do is to look and see to what extent then the author's intention is very plain in respect to what the text is to say so that when then that gives us the ability to be able to what um, I won't say have a canon within a canon but at least to have some sort of measuring rod in which we can say this is what we think that the author means with all these statements um, I, I approach it from that standpoint in other words then the uh, notion of authorial intent that must be um, worked out from what's within the text itself uh, I, I love a comment that I got from uh, Gordon Fee recently in which he says one of the problems that people have is that they interpret each verse as a paragraph. The idea then is that you dip into the Bible and you look at a verse and you know a verse and therefore what you do is you interpret either the book or that particular section by that verse which is a sort of a, a, an ad hoc lazy way of doing biblical interpretation. You know, we can accept that from people within the congregation, but for those of us who are um, uh, going to be skilled in presenting the Word of God to people, either from the pulpit or in Bible classes or in different classes, depending upon our professional status as we work in the world, then we need to be um, um, skilled in being able to uh, know the ways and means through which we can interpret the Bible and bring it to people. Um, that's conscionable to me as opposed to uh, just simply thinking that um, well the Bible is self-explanatory and all we do is basically tell people what it says and so forth. Uh, I, I have very strong views in regard to that, uh, very strong views in terms of the people who are in the pulpit or teaching Bible classes need to know as much about the Bible as they can to be able to express it in such a way that uh, it helps people to find uh, God within the midst of the word being spoken so it can change their lives and for me as skillful as we can become in the interpretation of the Bible the better that we will be in terms of disseminating that word of God and helping people to find the basis of growth so that means then knowing the, the text for many many um, months when I first became a Christian over 40 years ago uh, I read I think it was uh, 11 chapters a day of the New Testament because I worked out that there were 258 chapters within the New Testament and therefore if I read 11 a day within three weeks I'd be able to get through the whole New Testament. I did that for a year so that when I was involved with the uh, debates, and that was my tr church tradition, was really we found out who we were by getting involved in arguments with uh, different um, denominational uh, preachers, different ones, then that's how I found out what I believed. Um, and what I thought that the Bible said. That was in, in the early days, but it took me in good standing because it got me actually within to the text. There's some problems with that, and I'll explain all this later in terms of my own church background approach to the, the Bible. What I'm really saying is that we need to know the text. Really, before inter uh, interpretation occurs, in a sense, we need to know the spread of the text, and especially in my field, New Testament. As I said, it doesn't take that long to be able to understand it. I mean, I put the New Testament on a cassette tape way back then, uh, many years ago, and then I would play it in my car as I was traveling around. Now, of course, it's really easy. You can have an iPod, you can uh, have CDs in which you can play the New Testament over and over again. I personally think that if we're taking this really seriously, we should be able to go through the New Testament, or at least the major books of the New Testament. I'm thinking of the Gospels, I'm thinking of Romans, I'm thinking of Galatians, the Book of Acts. Key Pauline uh, letters in such a way that we know what's in each chapter so that we can do that. So that we have in our own mind, we build up the sort of deposit of information that's in there. It's going to help us interpretation. Obviously, that's much more difficult than in a sense the Old Testament, but I think that we, we should also try and do it from that standpoint. The more we can know about the raw materials, which is the text itself, will help us then within the interpretation because interpretation is a very complex thing. Um, Fee's right. Uh, people come to the text 
and they uh, interpret it in the sense of, well, here's a text, and therefore it becomes a paragraph. What he means by that is they frequently interpret the book by the text itself, and they don't do this. In other words, you could test this with preachers. The idea of, you could say to a preacher, well, give me an outline of the argument that's in Galatians. What is Paul saying in Galatians? Just give me a summary of it. Do we think like that? Because if we think like that, and we can trace then the argument, in other words, we know then how chapter 1 and chapter 2 relates to what's said in chapter 3, and then in chapter 4 and 5, we see the connections there, then we have uh, an ability to be able to understand the big picture, which helps us when we go into the smaller elements, down to the smallest verse, the, the verse that says um, to us that we are to um, uh, be crucified as Christ is crucified, we are to live as crucified uh, with Christ and we live for him. I'm thinking of Galatians 2.20, but we don't just give Galatians 2.20. We put it in the context of an argument. That's true in Galatians, um, and that's true in uh, Ephesians, when I think of Ephesians. And, of course, the whole Roman letter uh, is uh, uh, one of the great things I got from Romans once was to actually try to work out what Paul was trying to say to the people that he was writing to in Rome that was a rehearsal of what he would say when he got back to Jerusalem because Paul was actually on his way to Jerusalem when he wrote the letter to Rome. So he's, uh, he's in a sense sharpening uh, uh, his, uh, his, his mind by rehearsing what he's going to talk about when he gets to uh, Jerusalem and has to deal with the problems in Jerusalem, the Jewish Christians and the Jews in general who just hated him because of what he'd done, how he'd sold out on the Messiah because of the way that he had uh, preached a circumcision free gospel and so forth. And so you can trace that, actually, N.T. Wright does this, you can trace that from Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17, right through to the end of Romans chapter 11. Um, so what I'm saying is that we look at the spread of things in a very, very big way. Uh, and then, and, we, we, and I'm saying that too because we're not going to have that much time to actually get into the details. Although the assignments that I've given you that you have to do, and look at the syllabus, I'll make, I'll make a few references to that at this point. The syllabus then is, is a way in which we have to deal with particular texts where you're responsible for two texts, and I've given the details there, the threefold way to track open that text and explore it and give us interpretations of that text so that not only we can. Uh, in the work that I give you, where I can show you the big picture on a lot of the material. My primary emphasis is going to be the New Testament, but of course I'll be diving into the Old Testament uh, as well. Uh, but my primary interest is the New Testament. But we'll be looking at specific examples that you will bring out of uh, texts that have been either interested, interesting, problematic, uh, fundamental, uh, conceptual to our understanding of what Christianity is. Now we'll see how many of those we can present, but you must be ready when we have the intensive week to have those two um, uh, texts ready for interpretation to give to the class. We will see what the makeup of the class is, the numbers in it, and so forth, um, how we will do that within the week that we'll be together. But I do want to emphasize that you need to be ready when we start that week to actually give those two um, passages. And here it is on Wednesday. By Friday, I'll know the makeup of the class, Friday of this week, and I'll send you then uh, information in terms of what text I want you to be uh, dealing with individually. So you'll know that by the end of the week. That's an important element uh, of obviously what we're doing because it's a way in which you contribute, and I become the student in a sense, or the rest of us do, while you teach us from the text. And we use the principles we learn from Wright, the principles from Bom Blomberg, and also from fee in respect to how to interpret that text. Uh, I'll see more about the assignment at the end of the whole course, the big essay, which I've listed there, a number of essays uh, when we meet. And then the other thing, of course, is the examination we have at the end of the week. Make sure you know those terms in some way that I've put in the syllabus so that we can have a, a sort of cogent discussion as we go on in the week together without having to backtrack and explain all what the terms mean have a working definition of those terms um, within your mind. And of course, look at those um, weekly, those questions I raise as you go through the reading material to see where the bent is where I'm asking questions, which obviously is going to come out when I present material to you when we meet together. 
Now, one of the things that you'll notice is that we've got the, the first day and the second day, Monday and Tuesday together, but the third day, I want you to come to Chico and experience the Jesus Center and the notion of biblical interpretation in the context of one. Uh, it's going to be fascinating to look at, uh, we'll be involved in a Bible study in which we'll find out the how homeless people, how people who are drug addicts interpret the Bible, which will help us as we look and see uh, how we can become more skilled in doing that. What I've got planned for that day, and I'll explain it when we get together, because I'd like you to come down. Chico's about an hour and ten minutes from uh, Reading. We come down for the day, and we take the Bible study in the morning, then I show you around the Jesus Center, and then I've got three of my friends who are going to be presenting material to us. Um, one uh, who has got a um, Doctor of uh, Ministry degree from Fuller Seminary. He's going to be um, presenting material to us while we have lunch. My kitchen manager is going to put on lunch for us. Um, in the morning, I've got uh, a teacher who's a Presbyterian minister who teaches at William Jessup College uh, in uh, just outside of Sacramento. He's going to be presenting material to us on biblical interpretation from his church perspective, the Presbyterian church. And in the afternoon, uh, I have a, uh, another gentleman, his name is Richard Yale, from St. John's Episcopal Church, who's also doing a, actually a, a doctor of ministry here at Fuller Seminary. He's going to be presenting material to us uh, in, in respect to the way that the uh, Episcopal Church, the Anglican Church, has interpreted scripture. So I think that we're going to have a full day of activity there, and we're going to finish off by actually serving food to the homeless people who come into the Jesus Center, and we get to go back to Reading at 4 o'clock that afternoon. So we have the whole day activity. That's the Wednesday that we meet together. So uh, I think I've said enough just to give you an introduction at this point. You see where I'm coming from, just the ways that I've uh, uh, mentioned to you how I want to look and interpret the Bible. I haven't even scratched the surface of the comments that I was going to give you at this point. I'm really excited about this because this to me is the, the sort of warp and woo of what it means for us to understand what it means to be a Christian because it all ultimately comes down to what does this text say? How does this text relate to other texts? What can this mean for me as I live today, as I seek to understand uh, a text that's, uh, well, in the New Testament case, nearly 2,000 years old? So I look forward to having contact with you later on this week and I look forward especially to that week together, that intensive we have. Thanks.